So this is an example of the micro-adjustable 3D printable rotary coupling that I this video is about. It consists of three parts rather than one that you might expect. Uh, the reason being that there's one more tooth on the top than the bottom layer or vice versa. So you need a washer to suit both in the middle to suit both to cap both tooth counts. But this does mean this can be adjusted to within about one degree. I think it's 1.05 degrees. With a very moderate uh, clamping force it will take quite a lot of torque. How much torque? Let's find out. I only have click style torque wrenches. We we'll start at 10 Nm. Try the bigger torque wrench. But not that one I can't. Can't read that one. Six hundred newton meters. And it just slipped at hundred newton meters. What's happened, I think, is I've stripped, I've pulled through the screw. If I drop back down to ninety. It's close to going, but yeah, yeah. Still, I wasn't expecting anything more than 50. I think the failure mode is that it's pulling the it's pulling the screw through the counter wall. the bottom of the counter wall, which you probably can't see. I recently designed a DRO mount for a milling machine. Uh, I wanted it to be adjustable, so I decided to use a vernier coupling. If you want to make an adjustable coupling with 3D printing, you might have tried. If you try this, you'll find it's quite hard to get enough friction because they don't like to clamp up when they tend to creep. So the obvious answer is to make something lumpy but then you get a very coarse adjustment. However, if you interpose a washer, and then you, can, then you can have one more teeth on one side than the other. And this is called a vernier coupling. You'll see that the, they're in phase there on that side, and out of phase on that side. 
It's called a vernier coupling and it was a very popular way of adjusting magneto timing on early motor cars, which is where I saw it. I didn't make this up. I recognise that I saw this on an old vehicle as a student and it, the, mind, the idea has been in the back of my mind ever since. Uh, I'm going to, this is a complete thing, I, my, I plan to put a parametric version of the coupling on the Thingiverse which is this one here. So this is defined by various parameters. So if, for example, we could change the OD to 25 if we wanted to, and change the number from 6 and 7, for example, and then we get a very different thing, which doesn't quite work, but you see where we're coming from. There'll be, further, there'll be further adjustments to be made with that one, but I'm going to do an 18-19 one here, which is 50 mil, 50 mil, 50 millimeters diameter. Should we get to where we were? This is what we're after. Um, this uh, 18 and 19, which is the number here, gives you an adjustment of about one degree for resolution. It's 360 divided by one number. It's the difference between 360 divided by one number and 360 divided by the other number. So you get you get a much finer you get a, a much finer resolution than just having a a lump. So the starting point for the whole thing is a sketch. Basically, a centerline sketch. With various parameters, we cut. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but fusion. If you put a center line in, fusion will give you diameter, diameter dimensions, which is what, what these are. All these are based on parameters out of the parameter table. Basically, there's, these are top and bottom discs, and then this area here has been drawn in because we can do a sweep on that later to clean up some artifacts. So we, we involve those, end up with two discs, with a, with a clearance space in the middle. The next step is to create a sketch on each body. This sketch is centered on the middle. It's just, and the lines, and the separation between the lines is 90 degrees divided by the number of teeth on that side. It's 90 because each of the, there's two separate triangles and each will be rotated out to here and out to there. So you end up with four total triangles. So it's 360 divided by 4 divided by N1. So that's the basis of, the, of, the later, of, a, later, of a later circular array. Then we have another one of the other body. And then things get strange. Well, slightly, you think it a bit more complicated. You can just do it like this. You would perfectly, perfectly reasonable at this point to simply rotate that triangle that way and that triangle that way, or vice versa, and you get exactly what, we, exactly what we're aiming for. Except that the pressure angle is 90 degrees, which means that if your print is undersized, it'll have, it'll have slack in it. If it's oversized, it won't push together properly. If we put a bit of a pressure angle in, it'll wedge to get it'll we get a wedging action that it gets it gets tighter. The drawback, of course, is that if you have to do a pressure angle, then there's an there's more axial for axial load on the part. So the next stage is to make a plane, slightly surprisingly, on this face here. This is so that we can later project these points into an angled plane that we're going to use to make the to make the, the rotations in. It can all be, pro, could probably all be done with uh, trigonometry, but it was just easier this way, let the computer do the work. So this plane exists, it's created, and then there's a sketch in this plane which simply contains some lines going vertically, for, vertically up and down. The next step is to create 
an offset plane, in fact two of them, one for each part. And I also created an axis in the middle, that's probably not going to show up, the other axis in the middle for later, for, for later. So first we create a sketch on this angled plane. So this, this sketch joins together the center, a projection of the center line and a projection of the lines here. You can see how this line and this line have been projected to those points then those have been joined up. There's a little tweak here that this triangle, let's get rid of the plane, this triangle here has been extended out slightly outside the material whereas this triangle here is slightly inside the material. That's just to clear up some artifacts and make things a little easier to model. The next stage, well, that's all repeated on the other model, on the other, I'll show that. The next stage is a revolve, which I appear to have done on the other part. So here we go, right. So the first stage is a revolve. It's just revolving this triangle around this axis. As a, as a cut, and then another one as a join. Again, it's just revolve this this triangle revolved around that axis and joined on. And as I mentioned earlier, there are some slightly ugly artifacts up here in the middle, and it gets worse because the next stage is a, a circular array. all those parts. You'll see that because we calculated the angles and because these pairs of parts are made on, a, on, a, on an angled angled sketch, the same sketch, the, these surfaces are perfectly tangential with each other. We do the same thing on the other part and then another array. So we now have our basic shape with there, you see they're, they're in phase here, we go right to the side, they'll be out of phase. The next stage is just to clean up, get rid of those spikes in the middle, it's just a part of the original sketch reused, just to clean out those artifacts in the middle. And then a new sketch, it didn't have to be a new sketch but it is, could have, could, this could have been incorporated in the very first sketch but I didn't. Now this distance here to here is adjusted to suit. It helps to have, I'll come back to that later, actually, you want to rotate. And then at this point, this is just a solid, a solid, a solid disc. Then we simply subtract with a modify, combine, with the combination combine here. It's a subtract to leave, to, to cut out what's left. <coughs> the reason that the rotate isn't full height is to leave these flats on. This gives a bit more clear, this gives some clearance so it can clamp up, otherwise it might bottom out before it goes tight on the edges. You want the contact to be on these curved edge on the edges here, not top or bottom. Ideally there might want to be some flats on the other parts as well. But these flats here are mainly just so this part can be printed. This gives something to sit it down on, on the bed of the printer. And that's basically it. So, screw hole in the middle to clamp it together. <laughs>